The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Voting just isn't going to the polls on Election Day anymore. Options like early voting, mail-in voting, and ballot drop boxes are available to more voters and are growing in popularity. How to Vote, a tool created by Democracy Works, breaks down the options your state offers for casting a ballot, empowering you to decide when and where to vote. Democracy works best when we all vote, but misinformation and confusion about election procedures have resulted in low voter turnout. How to Vote, a tool created by Democracy Works, takes the guesswork out of the voting process. How to Vote is an easy to use and help folks from all over the country overcome many of the process barriers to voting. Democracy Works is committed to helping you vote no matter what. Their tool, How to Vote, does just that. You can sign up for election reminders, see what's on your ballot, get step by step assistance requesting your mail ballot, explore your options for returning your voted mail ballot, check your voter registration ch- status, find your polling site, and make sure you have the appropriate ID. Decide when and where you'll vote this year at howto.vote. That's howto.vote. Even though this is a presidential election, there are many more candidates on the ballot besides the president. Go to Ballot Ready for a nonpartisan guide to your entire ballot. From there, you can compare candidates based on stances on issues, biography, or endorsements, and then save your choices to use when you vote by mail or in the voting booth. You can even request your absentee ballot or make a plan to vote early on or election day. This election matters. Make sure you have a plan to vote and vote in form. And this year, with changes to polling places and vote by mail laws as a result of COVID, it's more important than ever to have a plan and vote. Local elected officials affect our lives every day. They decide who to prosecute, monitor the quality of our drinking water, and choose the leadership of our schools. 30% of voters take time to vote and then leave some part of their ballot blank. This is a missed opportunity to choose the leaders of our communities. It's okay if you're unfamiliar with some of the more local positions. We recommend hosting a ballot party, get together with friends over Zoom, split up the research, and go through the ballots together. Go to BallotReady.org and enter your address to make a plan to vote and vote in form. That's BallotReady.org. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers who are well-focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites. We give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960.
or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. It's now time for The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. It's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. How are you? Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the MikeWidenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also, follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful author from the UK as we're speaking from the other side of the pond via Skype. And thank God for the modern day technology. She is um, known her for uh, Terra of Bane series. And also, she's also done some fantasy romance, paranormal romance, and supernatural alphas and urban fantasy. And known for some books like Death Be Blue, Death Be Charmed, Death Be Burned, and Death Be Told. But nothing about Death Be or Buy Chocolate as of yet. We're going to talk about that later as well, too. <laughs> And here she is transitioning to a brand new phase and a name you're going to have to get used to. So live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plush Studios here in the beautiful UK, ladies and gentlemen, the former author Katie Epstein, now the author Katie Carries. Katie, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. It's an honor. Thank you. Well, it's an honor to have you as well, too. I mean, you've written a dozen books as well, too. You've had the Terra Vane series, which is Death Be Blue, Death Be Charmed, and Death Be Burned, Death Be Rising, and a lot more. You also had the Portside Diaries and Death Be Rising, and just an unbelievable amount as well, too. And, um, you know, look at my list here. It feels like a king scroll. You just um, look at it and just rolls all the way down. And you got Strike at Midnight, Hiding the Sight, Lawless, Hunted, Taken, Sweet Curse of Blood, and more. Just a lot of books, and you've been well known in the, um, the UK for quite some time uh, under Katie Epstein. And before we get into your books, um, you know, tell us how you got started, and uh, tell us about the transition from Katie Epstein over to Katie Carries. I uh, took the writing seriously in my mid twenties. It's always been something that's been in the background for me, but I never wanted to be an author. I think. It seemed so far off, like a far-fetched thing for me to be. And I think back then I would probably have been a pop star if I had to go for something, you know, that far-reaching. Not that I could sing. But, yeah, it's I don't like the written word, believe it or not, the, the technical side of it. If you ask me where an adverb is today, I'd probably have to chant this rhyme in my head to, <laughs> to try and understand <laughs> and explain. Which not, It's not good for a writer not to know these things, but... For me, it's all, always been about putting my imagination out there in the world and for me to convey it in the written word because I love reading. So I started to take it seriously in my mid-20s, finished my first book and from there had a lot of life lessons and went into a boot camp of hiring editors, having bad reviews, rejections, all the like and going on a little bit of a rite of passage, really, really. So I've been doing that journey um, probably since 2012, and I've got several books out there. And recently, I wanted to do the pen name of Katie Karras because I felt like it was time to leave that journey behind. And Katie Karras for me, originally was supposed to be just paranormal romance. And I was going to branch off and focus very much on 
a lot of vampires, a lot of heat levels. But I really struggled writing my books under one genre because for me, I struggle to write to market. I struggle to write to demand. It's very much comes from my soul, what comes out. And I found myself being very restricted. So I had to go on a bit of a journey because I'm also separating from my husband. Mm -hmm. And it's very amicable. But obviously, moving forward, you tend to look at things very, very differently. So Katie Carries for me, Caris is the Welsh um, word or one of the Welsh words for love. Mm. And I, when I visit Wales, I just find it to be a very magical, untouched place through the mountains and the valleys. It's very beautiful. So for me, Caris represents the two things what all of my books fall under, which is magic and romance. So here's to a new beginning. That was amazing, too. I had to remember I was telling my wife, I carries you. So <laughs> we'll just tell everybody that instead of I love you, just say I carries you. I think we'll start a new movement there. So <laughs> now, now, now you're talking about uh, going from Katie Epstein with all the paranormal uh, romance, a fantasy romance, the urban fantasy and a lot more with Katie carries. I guess you're kind of making a transition into somewhat the romance paranormal. But what other genres are you looking to um write about under Katie Carey's like say um you know for example like say crime drama western or comedy anything like that so what is what are the next genres you're looking to um to to write under the new name Katie Carey's besides what you're currently doing it's a supernatural cozy mystery is something that um, originally it was going to be cozy mystery but I wanted the supernatural element still to be there it's the comical element as well that I like about Cozy Mystery, but I always tend to turn up the heat in my stories a little bit. So I, whatever I do tends to need a warning label uh, attached to it. So it's a bit of a twist on the Cozy Mysteries are normally quite sweet. <laughs> and here I come and turn up oh. the heat with that as well. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a different thing for me because... It's the funny element. I find the characters coming across very quirky. And, you know, the, the one that I'm currently writing called Hollows Back, it has, it's basically about a, a young woman who can see spirits and she wakes up to find that her uh, aunt uh, has died and wants her to help her find out who the murderer is. But she threatens to sing my humps by the Black Eyed Peas until she agrees to help her. So it's... um. It's been an interesting take for me to go on that. And that, I suppose, as I say, it's I love magic. I love romance. And I like the artistic license it gives you writing fantasy. But I also tend to find that in my books, naturally, there tends to be some form of crime, crime solving that falls alongside that. So I think once I've exhausted all of those possibilities, I, I'd love to know what's coming next without the magic. That would be an interesting thing to see. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you talk about turning up the heat, and I was looking through, I went, ah! You know, I just <laughs> I really got burned, and yeah. <laughs> I, I came very close to the emergency room, not being able to talk to you, but then my wife is like, here, I'm going to take care of this, kisses my hand like that, like that, and says, get on and talk to Katie. So... <laughs> Well, I don't need the bandages, as you can tell, too. And, um, you know, turning up the heat and, uh, you know, how else um, are you turning up the heat as well, too, like with what other elements and what do we expect? Well, what you tend to find, again, when you start to research things, the scary element is people love to put labels on things. So if you do too much of something or say certain words, all of a sudden it becomes erotica or it becomes erotic romance and you find these chains continuously start appearing from nowhere. And for me, when I say turning up the heat levels, it's just taking it that a little bit more graphically how we describe the lovemaking scenes, should we say. And what I find with those lovemaking scenes to me is, is I have, sorry to pick on the male the male gender here but in my experience I tend to find that I either get told I'm writing um, pornographic material or I get the eye roll of oh your sexy romance or etc but uh, I'd, I'd always love to turn around and say please ask what your wife or your girlfriend are reading because there is a reason why romance and erotica 
is the is a multi-billion dollar industry and it's the biggest, largest selling genre in the world. So maybe ask your other halves why that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll certainly do that. Maybe we'll reserve her for Valentine's, Sweetest Day or any of the day as well, too. And we'll talk about some of your works in the Terravana series and more. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit our line at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, one 800 303-3960 that's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com mention the mike wagner show get 20 percent off your first project sonic web studios take your ms the next level also the mike wagner show can be heard on the mike wagner show.com you can check our facebook page at facebook.com slash the mike wagner show you can download and listen on facebook soundcloud spreaker spotify and iHeartRadio. also on anchor fm radio public itunes google play and over 25 podcast platforms take the mike Wagner Show at the end. Any mobile device, subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with author from the UK, Katie Epstein, who is now Katie Carries here on the Mike Wagner Show. And we'll talk about um, your first series you did, the Tara Vane series. And first of all, tell us a little bit about Terry Vane and, um, you know, what inspired you to write. And most importantly, how'd you come up with the uh, Tara Vane character? I'd like to hear, let's hear a little more history about it. Tara Vane originally came from an idea of having an empathetic or was a profiler of the FBI who was an empath. And I wanted, I had a separate story of what if we had enforcer field agents in another world who governed the supernatural part of the species. So it came to me of having the idea of having a, um, a human being, a human woman who is psychic and who gets the opportunity to travel through the portal to this other world where these mythical creatures or supposed mythical creatures exist. So we came up, oh well, I came up with the idea of Tara Vane. She, her and my imagination popped out of my imagination and I wanted her to be a character who'd suffered quite greatly through her youth because of her gift. Mm-hmm. And she struggles to be I think her as an enforcer field agent, because a lot of those people in the other world are, or the agents are uh, shifters, wolf shifters, and they're male as well. So she kind of has a lot to prove. And what I loved about the Terra Vane series is with my research, I wanted to try and come up with a reason of why we would have a supernatural world through a portal that the humans didn't know about. Mm-hmm. So I started to do some research in our history about uh, all the mythical elements like Avalonia, Atlantis, uh, Leoness, uh, the other lost worlds as well. Uh, I think there's another one, El Dorado, to just try and see timelines of when we had biblical events like the Great Flood. Also, when the Mayans, the, the serpents came along and they predicted a flood and just then put the science over it to try and see when we, the Homo sapiens, etc., were discovered. And it was quite enlightening how a lot of our myth ties in with our science and ties in with our history that we know. So for me, I came up with the idea of Terra Vane was what if thousands and thousands of years ago before the Great Flood, that fairies existed, werewolves existed, vampires existed, and we had magic, uh, we had gifts all all around us. But then they had the prediction that the Great Flood was going to happen. So because they had magic back then with the shamans and the witches, they actually discovered a portal to a dimension pocket that sat in between worlds. And because of the magic of the fae, the fairies and all the different elements they were under, they were able to come up with this weather management system and actually create this ecosystem where they could survive while the Great Flood then wiped out those remaining on the earth. So through evolution, through time, they become very civilized and banded under the uh, what they call um, citizens and different. So we've got sapphire citizens and amethyst citizens, and they're banded to retain order, which is what Terra Vane and her partner governs. And sometimes she goes over to help the FBI on cases where they need her psychic abilities as well. So some amazing uh, stories came out of that and went on a bit of a tangent. And we're coming up to book eight, I think, has just been published. Wow. And what is the uh, eighth book again? The eighth book is Death Be Hell. 
death be hell. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and of course, you talk about the um, the paranormal, the portals, and everything else. And um, and of course, it sounds like to me you also go through a time machine as well too. And maybe you can describe um, you know how the time machine uh, works and um, you know what they you know maybe describe the model of it too if they go through portals. Like what time yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, they've, they've actually um, in the book they've got four portals, and these portals they actually travel to different parts of what we call our world. So there'd be one in Egypt. We've got one south of India where Lemuria was supposed to be, and that's where the mermaids travel to. There's one in Glastonbury in England with the King Arthur legend, going back to that. And I think I've said Egypt, haven't I? And then I think yes, the one we see mostly feature in the story is Seattle. So that's the most used portal uh, where they come through. That's called the Fire Arch of Atsilla portal, uh, portal to um, represent the ancients who created it back then. So there's a lot of backstory that comes in with this. But Terra is actually appointed to this team of people she's affiliated with. There's a witch on her team, a lust demon, a vampire and uh, a wolf shifter. And between them all, they have to go and bring back some escaped foes who've escaped from the supernatural community on Earth. So if there is a djinn or a necromancer among us, then that's where they've come from. They've come from the world of Portisside. That is, that is amazing. And, of course, you talk about finding these lost artifacts. Now, are these all tied into um, to form, say, you know, solving the mystery? Is it that type you find these lost pieces and putting it together to solve the mystery? Well, it's... Um, Without revealing too much, uh, it's more people than pieces. So what it is, there's a hidden agenda of somebody who is orchestrating uh, this bigger plot, if you like, to tie in at the end. And unfortunately, Terra, she she seems to be, I think by book three, she's sick of being tied up and captured uh, by the supernaturals. So we have each each book does close out so that part of the story does close out we have closure but then it lingers on this bigger plot that sits in the background to the next book and to the next and we see that unravel uh, of the corruption that is out there going for uh, a bigger piece of the pie Mm -hmm. and and also too another thing you talk we talk about time travel the paranormal and everything else if you were asked to go on time travel right now would you do it yes or no and why or why not (laughs) i'd have to (laughs) i'm a writer i'd have to i think my natural curiosity would get the best of me where i would go though i would if i had to pick i would definitely say 18th century or regency uk i think it was an era where there was so much beautifully uh, crafted and if you were a blue blood with lots of money then it was great for you Not so much uh, if you weren't, but just to see, you know, just the costumes, the clothes they wore, uh, the milliners and just all the beautiful handcrafted items that we had back then is it would be great to go and see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. It sounds like you're on a roll here. So I know I've got to calm down because I'm getting my Mr. Darcy come in. So I, I better stop there because the heat levels are go. Whoo! Re- so really? I'll rain that back here, in. Here. <laughs> hey, have a little something to drink for you. That will calm you down. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Yeah, you bring. <laughs> Let's bring the heat level. Your wife will know what I'm talking about. That's the thing. She'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh, oh, exactly. Yeah, too. <laughs> talk about a few of your books as well, too, and uh, some of your other offshoots. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the Mike Show.com. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be here on the MikeWidenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with author Katie 
Epstein, now known as Katie Carey's from the UK here on the Mike Wagner Show, best known her for Tara Vane series. We're going to talk about a um, little bit more about the books like Prophecy Child, more urban fantasy, and also some more fantasy romance like Strike at Midnight, High in the Sight, and more. Maybe just cover a few more of the uh, Death Bee books like your first one, Death Bee Blue, and um, you know, talk about a little bit about that one. So Death Bee Blue, that starts off the journey of Tara Vane, who is the Enforcer Field Agent for Portisside City. It's they've been chasing a cannibalistic killer for several weeks. So we begin that book with her and her partner on a stakeout in the more unsavory part of town. And Portiside is actually split up uh, into four parts in the city. We have the Victorian Quarter, which is very rustic, very steampunk. Then we have the Crystal Quarter, where a lot of the Fae live, uh, buildings made of tumble stone, etc. A lot of modern technologies and innovations there. There's the industry quarter where that's a little bit more where the uh, the inventors and the engineers live. So there's smog ridden. They like to keep themselves to themselves. But then we have the Indiceum quarter where Terra works at the agency, which is where all the data hubs and the office and all the late night vampires tend to work with their nocturnal activities. So we start off in the Victorian quarter with Terra and uh, Wolf Shifter partner Caleb. So by following this cannibalistic killer and discovering more about him, this is where the corruption begins to unravel around a blue pill, a drug that's hitting back on the market. And in Portiside, drugs aren't really a problem because they wouldn't tend to be if you've got magical potions at your fingertips or supernatural powers. So it's something they have to investigate further. And then that goes into the next books as the corruption reveals itself. Mm -hmm. And and also it goes into Death Be Charmed and also um, Death Be Murder and more. Maybe just uh, quickly tell us about the um, remaining books before we uh, get to the others. So in each book, Death Be Charmed, for example, she has to go into a place called Darkwood. And Darkwood, because the weather management system of the Fae can control uh, the different weather for different areas of Portiside, uh, Darkwood is in darkness 24-7, hence the name. So she has to go undercover there with her ex-boyfriend, who is a vampire, to discover somebody who has escaped prison and who the vampires might be hiding out. That was a fun one to write because I got to look at the different vampire elements and the different myths around vampires to sort them into different houses in Darkwood. So we have the House of Osiris, which links back to where the myth about Osiris and his brother Set being vampires. And then there is the uh, House of Sangui, which is where the House of Blood, Latin for blood, where they like to uh, try and be affiliated with the Fae, but the Fae look down the nose at them. And then we have the House of Atlantis that links, links back to the myth of the vampires where there was a super... Um, a supernatural race back during the times of Atlantis and vampires are one of those. And then the last one is the House of Strigoi. So it's, it was fascinating to see how many different vampire legends there are in our history and play on that for Death Be Charmed. Mm. So that was a fun one to write. It, it sounds like you had a lot of fun with these uh, seven books as well, too. And how did you first get involved with the uh, paranormal? The paranormal for me, it's always been an interest. And I am um, one of these people who, again, people roll their eyes at because I'm so into conspiracy theories and reading in between the lines. And I think now as a culture that if we saw a vampire on YouTube, we've become so cynical that they could actually walk among us anyway. The supernaturals could walk among us because none of us would believe it. We'd think it's CGI or we'd just think it's acting or it's pretend because we live in this world of illusion. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fascinating that there is so much of our history that's not documented that we don't know. And there's so many gaps in that history. It would be amazing to think that something more magical, more than who we are today, once existed and how life would be 
um, if that magic still existed today. It's fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. And it sounds fascinating as well, too. And of course, you got the current events that are taking place. You know, you know, I got a new world order coming up and then you've also got, you know, the rising of the Antichrist and um, all these things coming in. And of course, you know, what's going on in the UK with also the uh, Brexit as well, too. That's been a huge controversy. And maybe just um, give us a take on uh, some of those conspiracy theories and um, what's going in your native country. Oh, so at the moment, there's been so many conspiracy theories that around at the minute, especially with the world and how it is. And now they reckon that there's so many, especially with the coronavirus at the moment, that there's so many loop, like weak elements in the story. When you look back, if I as a writer was to write this story, the amount of plot holes that would be in it, people would find it laughable with how things are playing out right now. I genuinely think there's a bigger picture. I think people are awakening up to that as well. And because I'm quite a spiritual person, for me, I like to think that we're coming in the year of 2020 and it's all about balance. For years in our history, there's been a lot of ignorance that's happened behind the scenes. And I feel like now it's all being brushed out from under the carpet for us to deal with. So we can find balance moving forward. So I'm hoping that the conspiracy theory that there's something bigger and better going on in the background for something to play out uh, in a good way in the future is a correct one. In regards to Brexit, we're a a 50-50 split country and there's, you know, 50 percent want to stay in and 50% want to leave. So that's caused a lot of controversy over here. You know, you've got families who have argued over it and got, you know, even fell out over it because they're splitting their opinions. But we're coming out the other end now. I think it's so important as a world that we just unite and come together anyway. I think fairness and justice is coming in with 2020 with the scales balancing. So there's lots happening, I think, for everybody at the moment. We're all having that inner reflection, aren't we? We're all all having that time to think for ourselves for once. So it will be interesting to see how all that plays out. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how many books uh, exist in the future with the coronavirus and you know, these romance with masks and, <laughs> and how they're going to turn the heat levels up on that. Who knows? <laughs> oh, you, know, you just gave us an idea. Romance with the mask. I think you do romance. Yeah, the romancing the stone or, you know, romancing with the spear, romancing the dance. Now it's romancing the mask. I think we just have <laughs> a great idea. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. And, of course, we'll talk about some of your other books like Strike at Midnight, Hiding the Sight, and more. But first, listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking our budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at Sonic Web Studios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with author Katie Epstein from the UK, who is now Katie Carey's here on the Mike Wagner show. We talked about the Terravane series and all her uh, Death Bee books. And um, let's also get into your, some other books as well, too, like Strike at Midnight, Hiding the Sight, and um, you all just um, also Hunt, Hunting the Alpha, which involves supernatural alphas. You can just uh, tell us more about that and your fascination with the alphas. So Supernatural Alphas, this is the one where the heat does get turned up in this one. And the reason I called it Supernatural Alphas is because I wanted to explore the more domineering male, I suppose you could say, in the supernatural world. So for me, that is really taking the chains off because to 
I admire authors so much who just go out there with no apologies and they write what they want to write. They find their target audience and they are successful because of that. So for me to see, to read a lot of MC biker romances, to uh, see that balance and that byplay of the domineering alpha and the female who isn't submissive, who can actually step up and be a challenge for this very domineering character it was such an intrigue for me. So the Supernatural Alphas focuses very much on that. And I have to try and be careful with my branding because my stories can be very different from one to the other with how I write. I like people to be able to think that if they've read the Terra Vane series that they can then transition to um, other books. But I also appreciate that people who are into the Terra Vane series might not appreciate um covers with men with their kit off right exactly and that's a lot of uh, <laughs> the romance um you know books out there these days so i mean that's very typical and of course it, it's like a flashback of fabio it's like that's what makes me think <laughs> yeah. fabio all over again and i can see it fabio 2.0 so uh, make make some ai corrections while you're at it too so <laughs> and of course you also have lawless hunted taken sweet cursed blood and the paranormal romance and um and i think we covered a lot of the books and you can uh, tell us about the rest and if there's any books i've missed feel free to uh, mention as well i just uh strike at midnight that's uh probably one that i really enjoyed writing that's a twisted fairy tale with cinderella and i really got to drop the f-bomb so much in that book it was like a release <laughs> she was, uh, she's basically uh, we, we meet rella rosewood and she has pink hair foul mouth and likes whiskey she's a renegade hunter in the kingdom of Karina, and she agrees to go undercover at the ball to see if the duke of york is indeed an imposter and from there we get the glass slipper we uh, get someone who's called Lemonade Guy. We get hints of Pinocchio and other characters that we know and love from the fairy tale world. So I'm glad that I transitioned that book to Katie Karras because I've got A Tower Above with Rapunzel and her twisted fairy tale, Caught in a Trap for Little Mermaid, A Thorn in My Side for... Um, oh, gosh, I'll talk, Sleeping Beauty, that's the one. So oh, I'm, I'm glad to be going down that quite exciting so i'm looking it, forward to that one it, it's it sounds like a sleeping beauty and says um i i, I need to take my um I, I need to take my uh, melatonin before i wake up in about 100 <laughs> years and then wake up and says damn it i need to sleep more <laughs> <laughs> well i do like a strong female protagonist so the sleeping beauty in this one her, her power will actually be she hunts in her dreams so I thought that was a good take on rather than having the prince come save her, that she's going out there and saving others. So. It, it, it sounds like, get get away from me. I'm going to save myself. Go <laughs> some coffee. I can imagine it. We, and, exactly. We always and, love a good prince. We do. We love a good prince. But uh, it's nice to see a woman being able to stand up for herself, too. And going on with the different energies, I think it's great to see that we can see the males being able to embrace that more feminine side of them as well and, you know, not be judged for that either. So mm -hmm. we're coming into balance. It's good. And, of course, still think about that glass slipper as well, too. It breaks, and, and Cinder looks and goes, damn it, why'd you break that? It's like, you're going <laughs> to buy a new one. And, and Or it could say, the shoe fits. It's like, yo, why is this not fitting? And just letting every F-bomb. And, um, you know, I think about Pinocchio. It's like, why is your nose growing, you sick bastard? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I can see something like that. And then, you know, I can see it as well, too, like in uh, Disney characters. Maybe Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, you know, start uh, – Try to kill each other or say with, um, you know, peanuts, Charlie Brown and Snoopy get into a huge dog fight or <laughs> Lucy and um, Schroeder just bashing each other with a piano. So I, I can imagine you going off on those tangents as well, too. And, of course, you know, I'm sure you, you love to hear suggestions from other people as well. And, um, you know, speaking of um, the, the new uh, transition and what do you have for us? Uh, can we expect me in 2020 and beyond? 
So this year, Katie Carries will be launching We've Got Hiding the Sight and also Sweet Cursed Blood will be coming out. And that one, and that's very fun to write because it's a take on when a slayer needs the help of a master vampire. So mm. there's a lot of tongue and cheek coming in that one as well. So there's Sweet Cursed Blood, Hunting the Alpha, We've Got Hiding the Sight. There is going to be two more Terra Vane books. I'm hoping to close out this year. If not, that may roll into 2021. But I'm also carrying on with the Prophecy Child series. That's a series of books that I released in 2014 that I'm rewriting. So there's there's lots there's lots to come out across the different genres and hollows back, which I've already mentioned. Mm-hmm. Once I've settled and got everything unpacked and got my head back on straight, then it's diving back into the writing and seeing what can get put out there because people are getting frustrated with me. They want the next book. I'm annoying them terribly. <laughs> so they, they'll be coming soon. <laughs> well, of course, if, if, um, if you if, if you get like, annoyed at their annoyance, maybe you can just um, reach out with that hot book and just um, you'll scum them and say, hey, back away. So. <laughs> I was hoping, you know, they'd they'd, uh, they'd have better things to do nowadays. But, um, you know, life's gone really crazy and there's lots of writers who are struggling to write. But it's it's lovely the fact they're knocking my door down. I'm so grateful for the support that I've had from my readers. They're they're amazing. And they've really had to help me on this journey of self-discovery, of knowing where to go. And all they've said is, look, we don't care what you're called. As long as you let us know who you are so we can buy your books. So that's best compliment in the world. And and speaking of buying books, where can they purchase your books at? At the moment, they're just on Amazon. And they're also available on Kindle Unlimited. So they will be going on to other sales channels in the future. But just for now, you can get them on Amazon stores. Okay, that is fantastic. Once again, author Katie Epstein, now known as Kay Carries here on the Mike Wagner Show. Just a few more minutes here. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having again soon. Who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Oh, biggest influence in my career I had to be getting an editor. Getting an editor. I learned so much through that experience. It was eye-opening. So I learned to, even though I still hate the written word, I've learned to appreciate it. So... It sounds like it, too. You did a great job over there. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? To anybody out there who wishes to write or put pen to paper, yes, we have to learn the technical side in anything. We're creating a product for people to buy, so it has to be of a certain quality. But please follow your own path. This year, if anything, is about paving the way, not following the way. So if the just be true to yourself let your soul speak and don't get too hung up on what other people are doing writing is subjective so just be true to who you are Mm -hmm. and that's so and so very true once again author katie epstein now katie carries on the mike wagner show katie a very big thank you for your time you've been very fantastic looking forward to having again soon keep us up to date love you back on sometime in uh, 2020 going into 2021 and once again tell us about your upcoming projects what's your website how do people contact you and again where can people purchase your books Okay, so upcoming projects, we've got a lot more for the paranormal romance genre. We're finishing off with Terra Vane series as well. We're putting a close on those. We've got Hollows Back. There's other projects in the works around uh, witches, which will be a collaboration. I'm also looking to do a podcast um, called The Empress and the Star as well. So look forward to that. But we... um, I'm just trying to think now, stores. You can see all of my books available on Amazon stores. And for more information about my works, it's www.katiecarris.com. I nearly said Epstein then, but I stopped myself. It's Katie Carris, C-A-R-Y-S. I really need to go and practice that, don't I? Yes, we do. (laughs) Yes, we do. And we carries you for this too so <laughs> you've been great carry a big thank you for your time you've been fantastic looking forward to in soon do us a favor keep us up to date we love you have back in the future and keep us up to date we carries you you've been fantastic <laughs> thank you 
Thank you very much for having me. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers who are well-focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites. We give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenue. Avenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. 